Okay, so now we're getting started on the rear brake assembly, and I wanted to show you how the rear brakes go. Now, if you notice here, the forward of the truck is this way. So, if you notice where it's where the shoe is, right here, right under here, where it says parking brake link spring, right here, that's where the shoe material starts, the actual material on the metal shoe. And notice on this side, it starts way higher right here, right about under the P of parking brake lever retaining clip right there. Now notice over here, primary shoe lining. To those that are new to, for those that are new to drum brakes, you'll find out the primary brake shoe is the smallest brake shoe and is the forward brake shoe. It seems backwards but it's not. So here we have the shoes, the new ones. If you notice, this shoe material comes up to here where that divot is. And on this side, it comes up higher, making this one here the primary and the forward most. Making this shoe here the primary and the forward shoe. This shoe is the secondary faces the rear the way it works is like this the wheel is turning in this direction spread open by the wheel cylinder in here like so but the directional rotation grabs this shoe and tries to turn it this direction this doesn't hinge on the brake plate instead it has a self adjuster which is basically a rod across here for lack of a better term at this point although there is a star wheel for the adjustment but we'll get to that point later this shoe tries to turn this way shoving this one in the same direction but also remember here it's also being pushed out by the wheel cylinder and that's due to the directional rotation of the tire so if you don't understand it there's probably better youtube videos out there to explain why the small shoe is primary and the big shoe is secondary but i did the best i could do with what i have to demonstrate either way Here's the instructions of how it looks like on the book. And now we're going to go put this on the truck. Okay, so here we are on a left rear brake. The entire brake system has already been removed on this side with the exception of the emergency brake cable or parking brake cable, whichever you prefer to call it. So we're going to start assembling everything. And when we're done here, this will be a complete brake package ready to ride. So first thing we do is we put a little bit of grease right here on these pads where the shoes ride. Because they'll ride in and out a little bit. Don't need a lot of grease, just enough. If you ever driven an old car, you step on a brake and you hear a little squeak noise. This is usually what it is, is those shoes riding on these pads. So I usually throw a little bit of grease there to try to get it to quiet down a little bit. So now we're gonna install the wheel cylinder. This is a left hand side wheel cylinder. The reason why you know it's left is because the brake tubes come at it from the back. And this is now facing front because I have it backwards. It faces like this. Another thing is, it might not be obvious to some, air goes up, liquid goes down. Bleeder always to the top. Put it in, like so. You have to squeeze in the pistons with both hands to get it to go inside these two brackets. These brackets help it in case you ever lose your brakes, that they won't, it won't shove the piston right out of the wheel cylinder and cause complete hydraulic failure to your rear brake system. Wheel cylinders are often held by these bolts, little short ones like so, through the brake plate. So now again, referring to earlier part of the video, primary brake shoe, secondary brake shoe. See the distant difference in the amount of shoe. Primary goes up front here.
until you start putting the springs on it. It'll just keep wobbling around and annoying the crap out of you. Now this piece here comes on, comes off of your emergency brake. It hinges off of here, this hole, and it's pulled on by this cable. So what you do, by the way I didn't mention, I have a brand new brake hardware kit here. So take this little tensioner spring, place it on it so. Put this in, that goes up in there. That little retainer clip in. Squeeze it on. And close it. And that works that. Simply clips on like so. I didn't show you earlier when you lock these together. You have this here. And this piece goes in like so. In, turn it, pull. Take it off. Of course, there's also a spring in that equation. And that would ride like so. This is just a little plunger. It goes between the piston of the wheel cylinder and the shoe itself. Again, this all rattles around and is loose until I start putting springs on it. And you take this bar. It's just a crossbar. It takes the force from this lever here when you step on the parking brake. This spot right here. That moves this way. And that makes this shove the other shoe out for when you step on the park brake. Of course, there's a spring for that, too. The interlock's there. It goes in like so. Fit it out. A little bit of lubricant, lubricant in there, a little bit of oil. Not for now, for four years from now when you're taking this apart. So now we're going to put the drum on. We painted the drum with high temp paint because this truck is going to have aftermarket wheels and everything from here out will be visible. If I left it bare steel, all you'll see is rust through a fancy set of wheels. So we painted them. And the drum just fits on, but it's loose. Brakes need adjusted. We'll do that right now. Here at ratcheting. That's that chrome piece with the spring and the cable. 
clicking against it. It's still very loose, obviously. Now it's really hard to turn right now because the differential is brand new and the differential is a little stiff. Especially since she's a posi unit. She definitely turns stiff. But again, brand new. See, now it doesn't move as much. Now you're starting to feel friction. But now the drum doesn't want to fall off. And that's great. That's all you want is to be a little tight, but not really tight. This right here, that's fine. It's just barely touching. If it's too loose, it'll self-adjust. But before we started, it was way out. And that's normal. You have to have room to collapse them and take it back apart. I could, if I really work, slide that drum off. But the easiest way, if you don't want to be lazy, just crawl underneath here and just back that adjustment out. It is harder to back out because of the geometry of the way that chrome dog rubs on that gear. But it will do. And, of course, replace your dust boot when you're done. Try it again. So now I'm setting up to make brake tubing. The hydraulic hose comes from your frame down to your differential and splits to two different to two different brake lines, which are solid tubing. This here is powder coated 3 16 brake tubing. So as you can see, the ends are simply cut. They are not made to a double flare. These come in big coils, or you could buy them in straight lengths. I buy them in coil because, to be honest, I go through enough of it. So now I have to make the double flare so they'll make a hydraulic seal into the hoses and into the new wheel cylinders we just got done installing. So here's how to do a double flare. Take your double flare tool. Imagine that, right? And hook it into your 3 16 hole. And you take your little collar here. You make it right about here so it's even, right like that. So this flange here is even with that tubing. And I know what you're thinking. You forgot the collar. No, I didn't. It's tubing. I could fish it on. It's the second one if you forget the collar. It makes for a long day. Right. You put your piece in there. Now, this crimp only makes the first flare. Of a double flare. What this tool does is with that indent in there, I don't know if you can see it real well, you see it better on a bigger one. This is for much bigger tubing, this indent in there. It'll make a funky little crimp on that steel tubing. And down you go. Bring it in until it's flat. You could do this handheld on a tubing that's on the vehicle. But one for demonstration purposes like we're doing here. This is easier to handle and to film. But also, it's just easier. But you can do this just handheld on the vehicle. So now, sorry, I'm going too fast. So now, look at what the flare looks like. It's dimpled outward this way. But that's not going to make a hydraulic seal yet. So now we take our tool. You see the press end. I point. Put it on. Thread it all the way in. And then close it. That seat we just made is the seat that makes the hydraulic seal. A shiny part right there. That's what makes the seal against. If you look deep in here, you'll see what it mates to. And those those flanges line up, make a good seal. And there you have it. So now, once this is attached to the truck... Simply threads in. I'm trying to find a better angle, but that might be easier. Simply threads in like so. Take your tubing wrench, crank it down, and now you have a good solid hydraulic seal.
Okay, so here we are under the truck. The brake hose attaches to this line right here, up through this bracket. So you have to imagine it comes down and attaches to the diff right here. Here's the old line. This end came apart okay, but the other end at the wheel got messed up. So now we're going to take this line out. And now we're going to use this line as a rough form to see how to bend the new line. But for now, we just got to take it out of here. This line's garbage. I don't care if I damage it a little. And there we are. So now we have a rough idea of the new tubing that we need. Now let's go make it. Okay, so now we have a very, and I mean very, rough estimate of the basic bends and shapes of the new brake line based off the old one. Once I put it on the diff, I could straighten it out, bend it a little bit by hand here and there just to tweak it, make it look a little nicer. Now this is when it really matters. Don't forget your collar. Otherwise you'll make a flare. You'll be cutting it off to get the collar on. Same process as earlier. Okay, so now the task is to put this hydraulic hose between here and the axle. So, that's what we're going to do. Since this will go in any clock position, the idea is to place this in a manner of which it won't kink and so it'll ride freely without kinking or chafing as earlier the previous owner had it rubbing right here with a zip tie I videoed that earlier this tube right here is the vent tube that vents the differential from any pressure built up by the by the gears turning in it so for now we're just gonna thread this in lightly to basically mock it up so I could find a way that I want the other end to thread into the bracket here. So I'm not going to tighten it or torque it down or nothing. I'm just going to put it in position so that I can mess with it here later. For now, this is the problem, the task at hand. I like that natural curve right there. As the differential rides up and rides down, this isn't rubbing. Literally, the other people had it zip-tied like that. I, I don't know why. I like that natural curve, just like that. That isn't going to cause you any problems. So now, this collar is nice and loose. It's original to the truck. So, I'm going to thread that collar into the hose while I can wiggle the hose around and make sure I don't cross-thread that collar. Get it down finger tight. Now that it's finger tight... I'm going to take this clip. The old ones are actually still in good shape. They're absolutely solid. And that simply goes in that notch. In here. Get it started. And get a hammer on it. Could use a screwdriver, but there's just no room in here, so that's fine. So now we're going to tighten that collar by taking a wrench and holding it so it doesn't turn. I'm turning it up a little to try to make this loop a little nicer the way I like it. So now that's not moving. Get a 3/8 tubing wrench, thread it on there, and then tighten it. Done. Now your hose is attached. So now we we'll take our very loosely bent brake tubing and get it and thread it into our hose here.
just need it finger tight and I'll start applying some bends to it get it more uniformly put on put this in the holder like the old one was start bending it making it a little straighter just to make it look a little bit better factory I like to have it looking more like a factory bend than just some jabron in Wisconsin bent it so let me put a little bit of crap to the tubing here the hose it's moving a little bit so tighten them down the tubing especially small tubing like this it's pretty malleable without kinking it. It's really not that picky. It's pretty forgiving, so you don't have to go crazy with it. But you do have to watch yourself and be a little careful. You see the orange cap on the wheel cylinder. I have to remove that cap and thread that in. So once I get that done and thread it in, then I'll tighten up all these holders here. This one. And then this one up here. Again, it's just loosely put in right now. So let's go ahead and get that attached. Okay, so now I have the wheel cylinder attached. Make this little bend just keep the brake lines away from the these U bolts. About like that. Okay, so now both side brake lines are attached to the hose that goes up to the frame. I reattached the vent tube for the differential. And then this is the short line that runs up over here and finalizes up here at the wheel cylinder. So now all we have to do is install the master cylinder and then get to bleeding the brakes once we install the master cylinder. So now the new master cylinder is installed along with the sandblasted and repainted power brake booster and all the brackets that go behind the power brake booster. So now all that's left to do is bleed the brakes now that we have the brake lines attached. So now let's get started on the brakes. So you go ahead and hop in. So now I tell Sean to press and release and eventually we'll see some fluid in the line. Press. Press. Release. Press. Press. Release. Press. Release. Press. Press. Release. Press. Release. Press. Release. Press. Release. Press. Release. Press. release so the way this works is you want to open the bleeder valve while he's pressing close it before he releases it 
Otherwise, when he releases the brake, it'll pull the air back into the system, trying to get the air out. Press. Press. Let's see a little bit of fluid now. Release. Release. Press. Press. And see this fluid. Some air bubbles. Press. Already pressed. Oh, sorry. Release. Release. Press. Press. Release. Press. Press. Release. Release. Press. Press. Release. Release. And now we'll go to the other side rear. Okay, press. Press. Release. Press. Press. Release. Press. Press. Release. So now one thing we have to watch out for is to make sure we don't run out of fluid. Remember, this is the rear brake reservoir. This is the front brake reservoir. See how we are low in the rear brake reservoir now? Now I have to add brake fluid. Okay, press. press. Release. Pre press. press. Release. Release. Press. press. Release. Release. Press. Press. Release. Press. Press. Release. Press. Release. Release. Press. Release. Okay, now this side is now done. I'll do the other side just to get the last little bit out. And then the rear brakes are done. Press. Press. Release. Press. Press. Release. Press. Press. Release. Okay, so now I have refilled the rear reservoir on the master cylinder. We're done with that, so now it's on to the front. Get and press. Release and release. Press. Release. Press. Release. Press. Release. Press. Release. So we finally got some fluid out of the passenger side, so now we move to the driver's side. Press.
Release. Press. Release. Press. Release. Press. Release. Press. Release. Press. Release. Okay, so overview of the brake system. Brand new rotors, brand new calipers, brand new pads in the calipers, all new hoses. That's all the front, both sides. Then the back, we put all new brake hose, which is that right there. That old hose is just a vent tube for the differential, which by the way, if you can see some oil there, I did fill it. Let me try to refocus. I did fill the differential earlier. I put the positive traction oil in it along with about a and three quarters of a gallon of 8090 oil. And I'm not going to take the brake drum off, but obviously earlier you saw us put all new brakes on the rears, both sides. So now the brake system is complete. Okay, so again, we've replaced from the master cylinder down to the rotors, down to the drums. Everything in between has been completely replaced. Obviously, if you look at the truck, you can tell this is part one project of many projects going on between the engine, interior, radio, it's all a huge job. But this video focused on only the brakes. Older vehicle brake jobs like this are pretty easy. Newer ones that get a little bit more complicated, but the basics are still the same. If you want to upgrade the brakes on a vehicle you have, we could do that. Big brake kits. If guys got the big wheels, want the bigger brakes, we do that. This was just rebuild what was already in existence. We're not afraid of anything here at FSC. So once again, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. As always, I'm Steve Festjack. This is Festjack Speed and Custom Shop. What else can I build for you?